Now, we saw something about prediction. Feynman said everybody thought the goal of physics was to predict what will happen next. I want to predict whether it's going to rain tomorrow, not whether it's going to rain eight inches during this winter. The scientists would rather predict probabilities and odds rather than to admit ignorance than predict nothing at all. Now, you remember uh, Cogite Ergo Sum, I Think Therefore I Am, from Descartes? I think the physicists, their motto is predicto ergo sum. I predict, therefore I am. Because the whole point of physics was to predict what's going to happen next. We're going to move on to Brian Greene. And you don't have to read this whole thing, but he wrote an article in the New York Times called 100 Years of Uncertainty. It was around Einstein's uh, miracle year, which was in 2005, where Einstein, a uh, hundred years ago, 1905, he published several papers in the same year that were groundbreaking. And Brian Greene asked, is Einstein wrong? Was Einstein wrong when he said God does not play dice, or is there evidence that, that God plays dice? So here we're going to look at the first paragraph is about the quantum physicist's predictions, which are about the next event. There's a 13% chance it's gonna, this thing is going to go here. There's a 19% chance the electron will go there. And there's 11% chance it'll be in third place, and so on. So it's just like, let's imagine this is a quantum die. And it's not one six for everything, but you, know, you add up 30% here, 11%, 90%. Now, now, how does he test this? He says, crucially, these predictions can be tested. Okay. Crucially, these predictions can be tested. So how does he test? He tests it by doing this trial, this experiment, multiple times. Take an enormous sample of identically prepared atoms, measure the position in each, and then you're going to come up with this frequency. Tally up the number. And then, to fantastic precision, we find that those frequencies match our thinking about the next event. Now, we already saw that you don't take the long run and apply it to the single event. Because that whole thing about the long run versus, that's the contrafactual definites at work. That's the hypothesis of, e of equal a priori probabilities at work. And we saw that Tolman said that's without proof. So then, Green thinking that he's tested this, and by the way, we saw that Sagan said testing is really the foundation of physics, because you don't want to be just philosophizing. There, there's, a, there's a view in physics that if you can't test it, it's mere philosophy. That's sort of often quoted. And of course, they have a very dim view of philosophers. I went to school a long time ago, and one of my professors, um, he was a, a philosopher, and he had lunch one day at the faculty club at MIT, and he spoke to a physicist and said, what do you think of us philosophers? And the physicist looked at him and said, think of you. We don't even bother to ignore you. So that's how physicists sort of think about people in the humanities, and people, th people who don't test things for a living. So then Green goes, can it really be that the solid world of experience and perception the world we see, okay, in which you can predict things. You can predict that in the long run you're going to get this thing. You can't predict the next event, but single definite reality appears to unfold. You know, the baseball takes off, and usually the major league baseball player catches it, unless, you know, they don't catch it. A single definite reality appears to unfold. You know, when you're driving your car, you have a single definite reality that appears to unfold. It's not like this car is going every which way. Could it be that this solid world, this single definite, appears to unfold, but it rests on the shifting sands of quantum probabilities? Well, yes, probably. The evidence is compelling and tangible. There is no evidence. He has confused the long run with the single event. And his predictions, as I mentioned, cannot be tested. And what's going on here is the CFD and what I'll call the conflation fallacy, where he's taken the long run and melded them together with the individual event and said, that's testable. And Nick Herbert would tell him, no, 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 that's not testable. And Tolman would tell him, that's not testable. 
Unfortunately, there is no evidence for, for Brian Greene that reality rests on the shifting sands of quantum probabilities. That's a viewpoint, that's an assumption, and he's perfectly welcome to hold that assumption, but don't say it's testable. So, so he has misled his readers of the New York Times by saying that, that Einstein, who resisted this whole idea of quantum probabilities, He's misled his readers by saying that, that that's testable and that there's evidence. Later, he says that um, the physicists insisted that quantum theory made predictions, albeit statistical predictions, that were consistently borne out by experiment, and that uh, basically that the theory was established. As we have seen, Tolman would tell him the theory was not established. It was without proof. 